Hey everyone, and welcome to this single player test world. So, for this video, I'm going to be doing something different, and first thing I will address is some of you might have noticed that uh, there was no video Monday. And that's because I was doing part or taking part in the uh, the CISPA protest, and I have written my governor or my governor and told him that I don't support the act, and I wish him to reflect that. And I will provide links and such for those of you who are not aware of this to. Uh, to read up on the documentation and decide for yourself if you want to take part in this. But I'm here in the single player world, and this is going to be the site of a few of my non SMP, non S non SMP, non SSP videos. And for this one, I'm not going to do anything special. This one is called Factorization and You. And this is a guide to the factorization automization that some people might find intimidating. And first up, let I don't know why I triggered that setting. That's for some other video. So the first thing we're going to need to do is look at this system and how it works. So let me grab a stack of ore. Um, let's grab... Actually, let's grab a stack of silver ore because this is a special case. So I'm going to go ahead and put the silver ore into my applied energistic system. And it's gonna start filtering out. It's gonna filter out into this unifier because there's only two, let's see. There are only three types of silver ore, one of which is found in the nether. So that's not something that reflects upon the system. But there's the one that occurs in our, our world gen and the factorization silver ore. And in order to run the factor factorization machines, you are going to need the factorization version of the ore for some of them. And I think it's only silver that actually needs it. And it's going to go into the grinder, which will then grind it up into our dirty Galena gravel, which will then be processed into... And a single ore can process into two of these. And the percentage or the the percentage increase of ore that you get from from this system is 120 percent. What? How did? That was weird. And after a certain point, it will clean up in the mixer into clean Galena chunks. And then it'll generate sludge and an empty bucket, and I'll get it, or I'll just how to do that. You then take it and put it into a slag furnace, which will smelt it into reduced chunks. Those reduced chunks will then get taken and put into a crystallizer with sulfuric acid. And there are five slots for ore and one slot for the sulfuric acid. Now, this is a slow process. This part of the process is the bottleneck, and the reason why I don't ever recommend doing this in single player. Yes, it provides a better ore processing amount, but it also requires 20 minutes per processing. That is a flat and unmitigatable 20 minutes. There are no configs you can change that I have found. There is nothing. It takes 20 minutes for this process to occur. Now, I do recommend this on servers that allow for chunk loading and that have as close to 100% uptime as they can offer. And so, when this is uh, done processing, it will turn into crystalline metals. And those will be processed in an electric furnace and they will uh, turn into bars, which we can come back here. And this machine has run twice for me, and I've gotten 22 silver ingots. Or rather, these, the crystallizers, have run twice. They've received uh, 10 pieces of the, the reduced chunks of each ore, and there are 5 ores you can process with this system so far. Silver ores, tin ore, Copper ore, iron ore, and gold ore. And the grinder does allow you to do other types of processing with um, any other raw ore, but it only allows for those five to be processed more. 
So let's quick take a look at some of the other things in the setup. That there is an amount of interaction required with this version of it because I designed parts of it poorly. But the system starts off by pulling uh, either, or the, the ore out of the ME network. And the ME network is really simple. It, it doesn't require much power. It requires roughly 48 EU per, per tick. Uh, that's rounding up and basically just adding a few EU extra just in case you decide to do it in a slightly different manner. So it'll pull that EU, or it'll pull all of those ores out of the system. And I also, I have an expensive amount of storage just for this system but that's fine. So it'll pour whatever, pull whatever ore it can out. So in this case, it's it's effectively pulled out the silver, which does have a separate sap, step. It has to go to the unifier, and it will go into the unifier, and will instantly process into the other type of silver ore. Now, if a machine cannot handle the amount of ore you're putting into it, it'll go back into storage. However, if it can, it will keep them on the left side, and you do have to inject into the top for these machines for it to put it into the left side. Once it's done processing, it will be pulled out at the front here, which is another side-specific one, with the, the gravel chunks. Those gravel chunks will travel over here into the crystallizer with a bucket of water. And this is where some of it gets slightly buggy and requires a small amount of maintenance every now and then. So, once it's done this, this process is fairly quick. It'll turn into clean chunks, a bu an empty bucket from the water, and sludge. And the sludge can be used to make clay, I believe? Let's quick look that up. There are two different types of sludge. Okay, yes, I do need to go into this menu. Yep, turns into clay. Smelts into clay, rather. So once you have the clean Galena chunks out, you have to pull them out and put them into the top slot of a slag furnace. And you have to have some sort of combustible. In this case, I have it set up to pull coal, charcoal, or coal coke into the bottom. And then the front will pull out reduced things, and the galena reduces into silver and lead, which then has to be put into the sides, not the top or the bottom. Top or the bottom represent the center uh, input in here, along with one sulfuric acid per, uh, per, whatever this is called, this process is called, per crystallization. There we go. Sorry about that, my brain stopped working. And each of these crystallizers requires at least one furnace heater next to it to heat up and allow the process to happen. And what you ideally want to do is have all five of these spare slots filled with the reduced silver chunks. Because that means it will process five of them at once. Now, you can have all of the, or one slot entirely fill up and then just wait, but that reduces, or that increases the amount of time it takes for the system to process. However, when that is done, it will pull out the crystalline structure and take it into my furnace, which will cook them up, and I have these set up with the transformer and volt, or the transformer and overclocker upgrades, just to make sure they go as fast as possible. And now there's this, my Zycorium water tank. And I have this because I can use an I.O. port, an item I.O. valve, to take empty buckets from this part right here and instantly fill them up and reinsert them into the network. So that's how this keeps the bucket in here. And I can put this bucket in here, and if there's a place, it will instantly try and go there. So, this process is done. Is or this is how the process works. It takes roughly, I want to say, probably 25 minutes, give or take. 
Uh, and it requires a fair amount of power, but it does provide a very large amount of extra ore or extra ingots from a single ore or several ores even. So let's get into the basics of this. First thing you're going to need is the EU for the actual uh, ME system. And like I had said before, that is only about 48 EU. So a single, uh, let's see, a single, it probably advanced solar. No, advanced solar is, generates eight. So a single hybrid solar panel is more than enough for this part. Oops, I'm just gonna put that there. And it'll, it will, for the time being, not generate any amount of extra, uh, extra power while it's filling its internal buffer. The next thing you're going to need is all of the stuff you need for the ME system. And I'll have a little rundown of all of the stuff that you'd need, but let's look at it right here. 34, oh, actually that's a good question. Are those input or output? Those are 34 export buses. 29 import buses, 23 cabling, one data storage unit, and one ME terminal. And it's an ME drive, not a storage unit. And in the storage unit, I have 10 ME 64K storage disks. However, you can probably get away with just one if you design the system to export into like barrels or something. And then you're going to need five grinders. So let's look at the recipe for a grinder requires diamond cutting head and a motor and some lead and iron. These, it requires up some amount of factorization crafting. You need uh, mixers, oops, which requires another fan and another motor, cauldron, some lead and water buckets. It requires five of them. It requires five slag furnaces, which are really easy. Let me quick pull up the, the recipe. Two furnaces and six stone per. Then it requires six crystallizers. Let me actually get the right recipe up. Which is a cauldron, a string, and a stick per. And it requires six heaters. So let's look into these. That's insulated coil and lead. Insulated coil is lead around a clay block. So it does kind of get expensive. And then your furnace of choice. And you can have other ways of doing the auto refilling water. This is the easiest way I came up with. It just requires a single zycorium water. Um, let's see, eight, 16, uh, 22. 23, or yeah, no, 22 blue engineering blocks, or whatever engineering blocks you you want, two item IOs, and two valves. And then this array for the furnaces is another question of choice. And then you need the solar turbine, which requires an infinite water source below it, and lead wire to, cut, or to carry the power. And let's quick come in here into the factorization tools. Let's grab the, nope, not the bandwidth multi, or let's grab the charge meter and look at the power. So this is generating a charge of 76 out of 100, or 1,036. It has 16 conductors. I'm not exactly certain. Oh, no, it is 16 devices in the, the, uh, the wiring course that use its power. And its power rating of 25, which is the number of mirrors, four, six, eight, 10, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. Yep, that's the number of mirrors pointing at it. So let's quick check on the ores. I think these, getting pretty close. 
So this is not the most efficient way. This does require some amount of manual input in the case of these if you want your time to be greatly reduced. Uh, it also requires you to occasionally check that this doesn't happen where you have four water buckets. But this is probably the simplest I can make it. So this is the factorization sing or, uh, system. It fits within technically four chunks. I can make it fit in one more than likely, but here you go. Here's the basics. Oh, nope, five chunks. But I can make it fit in four. That's the one I wanted. So this is a basic factorization uh, production plant. Hope you guys enjoyed this short tutorial.